Um, yeah. So the jobs news that came out today was not great at all. But um, considering everything that um, has come out outside of the Forex factory calendar, um, if you look at US 30, US 30 just kind of blew right past this news. Um, if you're using US 30 as the gauge. But here's um, one thing I want to say when we're talking about the economy. Um, the stock market is not a direct indicator of um, how well the economy is doing. Um, we use it as an indicator because, or it can be used as an indicator because you're looking at a group of businesses, you're looking at um, industry, you're looking at um, a function or a piece of the GDP, but we cannot say that the stock market is a direct indication of how well the economy is doing. And I specifically want to mention that, especially when we're talking about these job numbers and how I just mentioned that the market blew right past the news. If a company is performing well in the Dow Jones, which we look at as U30, US30, if a company is performing well, and let's say there are several companies that are performing well, those few companies can make it seem like the market is doing great when in all actuality it's not. So um, I want to really talk about that tonight, um, especially when we're looking at these news items and when we're talking about the market as a whole because when we look at how our economy is set up, how it's structured right now, what's going on with our economy and what we are coming out of or going through with COVID, our market, our stock market is reaching levels that it was at prior to COVID and nothing has really changed in essence. We still have um, what could potentially be high um, unemployment. We still have um, people being furloughed, people being laid off. We still have businesses not bringing people back. We have small businesses struggling. We don't have a vaccine. We still have um, a situation now where colleges and just students, period, are not back in school. So Nothing has really changed, but we have markets hitting new highs every day, and the Dow Jones is about to retest its all-time high. And so when we talk about market indicators, economic indicators, I just really want you guys to know and understand that um, the stock market really is not one of those things that we should be looking at to gauge how well our economy is doing um, because bubbles can be created. Um, sorry, I had took some notes and I'm trying to read my notes and think at the same time. So I'm just gonna put the notes aside. So when a bubble gets created um, in the marketplace, we see markets run hot. We see certain industries or certain parts of the market start to overextend itself. Um, what some people might say is like a bull rally uh, where you just see new highs created, new um, higher highs, higher lows, if you're looking at it as a trend. When you start to see that in the market and there has been no real retest of lower levels, that's a problem because the market's just gonna keep buying and buying and buying and everything that you see is strictly psychological. It's coming from um, the position of hope in the minds of a trader. Traders have hope that things are gonna get better, hope that a stimulus package is gonna come, hope that payroll tax holiday is gonna help out, hope everything is based on a hope that it's going to make it better, but from an economic standpoint, things have to get worse with those things before they get better. 
People just want to be out of this particular situation. So um, this job number, even though this um, agency that put it out is an independent agency, they're not a, they don't actually put out the true government number. Typically, it runs and coincides with the actual number that comes out on Friday. So if this number is similar to what is going to come out on Friday, then that means that we have really missed the mark when it comes to creating jobs. It means that we've lost jobs and we haven't seen the growth that we wanted to see. So we'll definitely be paying attention to the job number on Friday. I'll cover that more when I get to Friday. Um, so we had speeches today from um, a couple of GBP members and then we had oil inventory numbers come out today. So oil inventories were good. Um, one thing that I will be looking forward to seeing with oil is um, the recovery after tropical storms and hurricanes kind of hit the Gulf. Um, there are a couple of tropical systems that are in that area now. One of them isn't expected to really hit the Gulf. It's expected to hit more of South America. So if that's the case, we don't really have to worry about that one so much. But there are two others that are expected to merge and um, converge and move together towards the Gulf. Um, so if that's the case, then we'll just need to be on the lookout for anything that's going towards the Gulf at this point in time. This is really when we start to hit like the peak um of hurricane season is what the peak has been for the past few years so we'll just look going forward to see okay what kind of storms are being created um and what kind of weather um is really impacting those areas because even now you guys have to think about it like they just had a category four hurricane and then once inland category two just kind of sit over the area even though it moved it was still a lot of rain so um, any kind of rain any kind of thunderstorms any kind of just stormy weather that they get can um, slow down recovery efforts can slow down any type of repair work that needs to be done so just keep those things in mind um, you don't have to pay attention to the weather you don't have to do anything like that but it's just if you see it um, just keep it in mind um, that that could be something that could affect oil prices. So going on through the rest of the week, tomorrow we get unemployment claims. Definitely going to be paying attention to that because that's going to be factored into the jobs number that comes out on Friday. We're going to be looking at the ISM non-manufacturing number. Yesterday, we had the manufacturing number come out and it was actually pretty good. So this index, I think the highest point on this index is like in the high 50s, um, low 60s. Um, and so that's a good indication for manufacturing. One thing that I can say has truly helped pump up manufacturing over the last several months is the fact that there have been companies that have switched and have decided to manufacture make things, produce things that they don't typically do, whether it's PPE, ventilators, whatever. Um, that actually helps to boost manufacturing numbers. So it's really good because it's output. Um, when we look at these non-manufacturing numbers, I'm expecting to see some of the same. Um, Want to see just good ISM numbers all around and um, the Institute for Supply Management um, is who puts this out. That's what ISM stands for. So we will definitely be paying attention to all of these numbers leading into non-farm payroll, which is Friday. That's the big number. That's the biggest news item really this week that everyone is looking forward to. So whenever we look at these numbers on Friday, we're definitely going to want to see that A, um, average hourly earnings either stayed the same or went up. You don't want to see that pay was lost. Um, a lot of the companies that had 
implemented pay cuts temporarily. Um, a lot of them have reinstated full pay for most people. So we should not be seeing hourly earnings cut. We should be seeing pay stay about the same. Um, and that's what the forecast is. The forecast is zero, which is for it to be the same. Um, for the employment change, we already saw that the preliminary number today stated that we didn't create as many jobs as we thought. Um, we definitely need to see the true number, which is the number on Friday, which comes out from um, the Bureau of Labor Statistics. We really need to see this number come out and be on par with the forecast. If not, that is not a good sign at all. But what it's going to do is push Congress to push out stimulus. It's going to push them to try to provide money for the people. It's also going to push other other <clears throat> excuse me government agencies to try to do something to help supplement for the people who um, aren't in jobs and then to also supplement for those companies who aren't able to retain people because they might not have the money to do so. And if this number has gone up, so if it's about the same as forecast or if it's better than forecast, we should see the unemployment rate drop. Um, the forecast is for the unemployment rate to drop. As I stated during the last Zoom call, we definitely need to have the unemployment rate at this point in time in the single digits. If it's not in the single digits, then again, that's gonna be another push for the government to try to produce and give some stimulus, to try to help the people, to try to make sure that the economy doesn't completely stall. Um, I know we kind of talked about this a little bit um, in the past, but when you guys think about what the stimulus actually is, it's the government printing money to give to the people for the people to turn around and spend to keep the economy going. So. The economy rolling and like the economy's fuel essentially is the printing of this money that has to happen to get it to the hands of the people. That's your first step, but you have to give people confident enough to actually spend the money, which is what we talked about last week. So um, when we look at these average hourly earnings, that's that's the main thing. You want to see that people are making the money. You want to see that people are holding the jobs. And then as a country, you want to see that more people are starting to hold jobs. Speaking of jobs, speaking of pay, um, on the 31st, I didn't really talk about it a whole lot because I just didn't. Um, but it was payroll tax holiday on Monday. And so for those of you who don't know what payroll tax holiday is or what it means um, and how it affects you, your parents, your family, your grandparents, those who are working, those who have been paying into the system for a while, here we go. So payroll tax holiday is um, essentially a part of the emergency um, plan that, or one of the emergency executive orders that Trump signed off on when Congress wasn't producing a stimulus package fast enough. Essentially what this does is um, from now up until the end of the year, everyone who makes $4,000 bi-weekly, um, they will have, they won't have to pay payroll tax, which is the 6.2% that you pay for social security. You don't have to pay it for the rest of the year, which a lot of people are like, yay, that's awesome. I get that money. I can do what I want to with it, but you have to pay it back. So you have to pay it back between January and April of next year. So not only are you having to pay back the tax that they are letting you kind of borrow, but then they're also going to be taking out your payroll tax for next year at the same time. So you're going to have 12.4% taken out as opposed to just the 6.2. So um, for all those people who are great with money management, you have nothing to worry about. But for those people who might struggle a little bit, you might just want to calculate the 6.2% and just put it in a, open up another account and just put it in there. 
don't even touch it and then just pay it all back um, at the beginning of the year so you don't have to worry about it because um, it's a way to put money into the people's pockets without having to provide a stimulus but it hurts on the back end for those people who aren't good with money. And they're just kind of hoping that people aren't good with money because then they can penalize you and charge you for not paying back the money that's really yours, but they're just letting you have it a little early. So um, how does this affect, you know, your mom, your dad, your grandparents, aunts, uncles, people who've been paying into the system for a long time? Um, it's the social security system. So when you talk about not paying into a system that has to pay out people on a regular, consistent basis, that's a problem. Um, the social security system in the United States, I am not going to go into the logistics and how it was structured and how it works, but essentially it is a debt system. So the younger you are, you're paying into a system that you're not going to get paid out of. So like I could potentially not get paid out Social Security um, because Social Security is due to run out really soon. Um, the way that they pay out Social Security is based on the value of the dollar and inflation. So when we were having the conversation about inflation before, and I was telling you guys that they don't use true inflation, that's the reason why. They have to keep inflation at 2% because it's already an expensive system. So if they had to use the true inflation, which is somewhere between six to 10%, that means that they would have to pay out more money to people who are already already withdrawing from that system and they they just can't do it they have to stretch that money as far as they can and holding inflation or having the fed state that the target rate is two percent is a way to do that so um you know when we talk about digital dollar we talk about um all the things that the fed has been talking about doing all the things the government has been talking about doing you have to keep social security and these inflation-based systems in mind because all of this is going to come into play at some point in time so um i wanted to mention that about tuesday or about monday i'm sorry and then um I can't really think of any other news items that I just forgot to cover. Um, Trump tweeted today talking about the market, you know, had the market, you know, all excited about itself. Um, the Dow with the US 30 did cross 29,000 today. I think it's still above 29,000 right now. But Remember what I said, don't use that. It's not an indicator of how great our economy is doing because if anybody can raise their hand and tell me what parts of the Dow actually contribute to the economy, I wanna hear it because I don't know. It's just companies. It's just US based companies who are actually trading and you're looking at how profitable they are being. You're, that's the only thing you're looking at when you look at any of the indices. You're looking at the profitability of companies. You're looking at how well they're performing. You're not looking at the overall economy. Nowhere in that are you seeing the dollar. Nowhere in that are you seeing inflation. Um, you're not seeing stimulus in that. You're seeing sentiment. You're seeing how traders feel um, about a stock or how traders feel about the out, their own outlook. That's what you're seeing. You're not seeing anything economic or fundamental in that. So keep that in mind, you know, read Trump's tweets and you know, when he talks about how great the economy is because of the market, just know that it's not necessarily because of, <clears throat> excuse me, because of the market. It's just how well those companies are doing and they just happen to be a part of, um, you know, companies that are here in the U.S. So that's all I have for you guys for the news. Um, if anybody has any questions, 
you can go ahead and ask those now. If not, then I'll go ahead and turn it over to Mr. Levels. Okay, cool beans, cool beans. Appreciate you, Corman. Great job, great job as always. Cool beans, I'm gonna go ahead and jump into the technicals. Give me a minute to get my screen up. Put me a sip of water.